View Suspense, one of the more notable additions to the framework, allows for an easy addition of rendering a loading state while waiting for asynchronous data to be resolved. For example, we might have a page within our application called HomeView.View that is rendering a component called FeaturedMovie.View. While we wait to fetch the movie, we might want to add a loading message or animation indicating that we are retrieving it. The Suspense component makes this type of user experience easy on developers for a smooth integration compared to View 2 where it required the need of conditional rendering with multiple templates and variables tracking when our data was retrieved. So let's jump into the code and see how this works. Really quick before we get started, be sure to scroll down and leave a like on this video as this really does help out the channel. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe. Within this view application, I have a component called FeaturedMovie.View. Let's first create a new ref to store our movie info in. Next, we'll create a function called GetMovie. To mimic an API call, we'll just await a promise and use a set timeout of 3 seconds. Then we'll set our movie ref to some static content to inject into the template, and then we want to execute this function. Lastly, we'll add some markup and output our movie info ref into our template. In our home view component, let's import our featured movie component. Now currently if we take a look inside of the application, we don't see any content. Within the console, we actually have an error message stating that we define a asynchronous component with no suspense component. When you define a component to be asynchronous, you need to use a suspense component. Now, a component is considered suspenseful in two different ways, with a asynchronous setup hook or if you're using script setup and have a top level await. Since we define our function to be asynchronous within featuredMovie.View using script setup and a top level await, this is why we are receiving this error. To start using the suspense component, all we need to do is wrap our content within suspense tags. This component has two slots, default and fallback. The default slot is for the content and the fallback would be for your loading state. And each one of these slots allow for only one immediate child node. Initially, this component is going to attempt to display the default slot content if possible. If not, our fallback slot will be shown instead. Let's add our featured movie component to the default template and then add a simple message called loading in our fallback template. In this component, we have a top level await, which is resolving after three seconds. So currently we will see our fallback content since our component has yet to be resolved and is in what is called a pending state. Once the asynchronous function has been resolved, then the content within the default slot will be rendered. The suspense component has three different events that it emits, pending, resolved, and fallback. We can see this if we define some event handlers on our suspense component. Within the application as a component is operating, we'll now see the different emits being handled. When the application is first loaded in, we can see that pending and fallback are being emitted. And once three seconds has passed, then we'll see resolved. Once the component is in a resolved state, it will only ever revert back if the default slot is replaced. An example of this would be if we're using what is called the component-like feature called component. This is useful for rendering in dynamic components or elements. First, we'll create a new variable and call it view and set it equal to a ref with the value of 1. Then we'll add a button at the top of our template to update this value of view to 2. To have a second component to switch to, we'll duplicate our featured movie component and call this featured movie 2. Next, let's convert our default slot to use the component. This accepts a 2 prop and we'll set it to display featured movie if our view ref is 1, otherwise we'll show featured movie 2. Then if we click the button, our suspense component combined with the component will update to show featured movie 2 after 3 seconds once it has resolved. By default, this will not revert back to the fallback content when the two components are switching. It'll show the previous default content while the new component waits to resolve. You can, however, force it to use the fallback content by passing in a timeout prop and setting the value to zero. Now it's going to use the fallback content instead of displaying the previous default content. Currently, the suspense component does not provide air handling. However, we can use what is called the on air captured lifecycle hook to capture any airs within our component. Inside of homeview.view, let's first create a new variable called error. We'll set it equal to a ref with the initial value of null. Next, let's import and define the on air captured hook from view. If this lifecycle hook detects an error within our featured movie component, then this will get triggered and we can set our error ref to say sorry something went wrong. If we do encounter an error, then the suspense component is never going to resolve. Therefore, it's going to revert back to our fallback content if we have an error. Within our fallback template, we can add a vif directive to output the error if it is true. Otherwise, output our loading message. 
Alright, that should be everything you need to know to get started using View Suspense. Hopefully you now have a good understanding of this component and can start incorporating it into your applications. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.